Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, it's winter. It's cold. <laughs> Dead of winter here in the desert. Still much nicer than the rest of the country. Um, most days by the afternoon, you can just about go outside in a t-shirt and jeans. It's, uh, it's not too bad, but it's cold. And the cold kind of takes the energy right out of me. So uh, I've been uh, working on a, a little software bug here. So the CW Flea transmitter that Zach Tech and I co-developed uh, has a small bug with the tuning. And uh, it, uh, it's a little annoying. <laughs> it's not a deal breaker. It didn't keep the transmitter from being usable. It was just an annoyance. Uh, when you would tune the uh, transmitter up and down in frequency, uh, the way that works is there's an up and a down button and uh, the receiver that you're using with it becomes a side tone. So when you hold down one of the tuning buttons, it moves the transmitter's frequency, turns on the VFO, but doesn't transmit. And the receiver hears that and it moves the uh, frequency up or down, depending upon which button you push. And uh, the way that those buttons are supposed to operate is if you hold the button, if you tap the button, it moves in a very uh, small step, a slow tuning rate. And if you hold the button in for more than half a second, it switches to a high rate so you can quickly QSY across the band. Uh, and that kind of works, but there's a little bit of a bug where occasionally when you're tapping the button to move it in small steps, it'll suddenly jump one step at the high rate uh, and you have to move back, you know. And, and like I said, it's kind of annoying, but, but not really a deal breaker. And I set off to fix that bug. So let me show you the bug first. Hello. Sorry about the mess. I just kind of got things hooked up here. I wanted to show you the bug. So I'm on 40 meters, and if I use the tuning buttons, you'll see the signal appear in the um, band scope. And you can see how after half a second delay, it switches to high speed. It moves slow, and then it moves faster. And then you can tap to fine tune it, but it occasionally will drop out. And then you see it jump there? See it jump? Nope, there it did it. So it should be moving in 10 hertz steps when I tap the button for fine tuning, but you'll see it'll jump occasionally at the high rate. That's the bug. So that's what I gotta fix. So that's the problem. Uh, and it, <laughs> I wasn't sure exactly why it was happening, but what it comes down to is the way I was timing um, those buttons. I was counting down a half a second from the first time you pressed a button, or from when you pressed the tuning button, and somehow that was getting out of sync with repeated short presses. So I decided to go a different route, and instead of um, timing the tuning cycle from when you begin the cycle, I thought, let's just time the hardware. Let's time exactly how long you're holding the buttons in. So I rewrote the code uh, to do that. Let's go take a look at the code and I'll show you how it works. All right, so here's the original software that uh, I wrote for the CW Flea. And uh, for keeping track of delays, like the half a second tail um, on the uh, transmit, you know, when you release the key the final time, there's a half a second tail before it switches to receive. And to try to keep track of time for the fast and slow tuning rates, I needed a timer. Uh, so what I did was I created an interrupt loop. All right, so here we are. This is where we set up the interrupt. And I'm, I'm taking one of the timers in the microcontroller and I'm setting it up to interrupt the processor 1,000 times a second. Uh, to run my interrupt loop. Interrupts are exactly what they sound like. Uh, the processor's chugging along, running your code, and an interrupt comes in, the processor stops, suspends its current state, jumps over and runs your interrupt routine, goes back and resumes its uh, present st or previous state and continues doing what it was doing. And interrupt routines are used for timing sensitive stuff. For example, uh, serial data. If you're receiving serial data, well, that data stream is coming in continuously, the processor has to read a byte um, as it comes in. If it misses one, 
because it's off doing something else, well, then you've just dropped a byte of data and your, your serial data is corrupt. So the uh, you might recall in the old days of um, DOS and Windows IRQs, those were interrupt requests. And a serial card would have an IRQ line where when a byte of data came in, it would trigger that line, which would trigger an interrupt on the processor, and the processor would jump over to the BIOS code to fetch that uh, byte of data that had just come in. So interrupts were used for scanning keyboards, for anything that's timing critical. And I'm using it simply to count time. So I've created this interrupt uh, vector that's using a timer to run 1,000 times a second. And then this is the interrupt routine here. Signal, timer zero, comp a vect. This is uh, what's going to happen every time that interrupt triggers. So 1,000 times a second, this happens. And what this does is it's, it's the uh, tail for the uh, keyed state. So like you're sending CW, you release the key that last time, there's a half a second delay before it switches back to uh, receive mode. And that's what's counted here. If uh, tail is greater than zero and we're keyed, um, increment it. So that's a counter that counts up. Um, and then I had this tune count variable that I was using to try to time the push button uh, inputs on the tuning buttons. And uh, this didn't work. Um, I th think the reason for that was that I was, I was trying to time it based on when we're in the tuning cycle. So pushing a button um, in, entered, a, inter, in, entered into a state of tuning. And that's when I would set this flag, tune VFO to one and turn on the VFO so we could hear it in the receiver. Um, and I was trying to count half a second from when we uh, entered into that tuning state. Well, that's not working. So what I've done is I've rewritten it. Let's go back over here to the new version of uh, the, the updated bug fixed version, I hope. And uh, you can see here I'm setting tune count to zero. So I'm just using it as a counter now. And if we scroll down, we'll find my interrupt routine. Here it is. So now the interrupt routine is looking at the tune count variable, if tune count. So if the counter is anything other than zero, zero I'm, I'm not doing a, in fact, I could do that for this one too, actually. If tail is greater than zero, that could just be if tail. Well, anyway, yeah, let's fix that there. Because if it's anything, if it's anything other than zero, then that that test's true. So that's same thing here. If tune count, which means if it's anything other than zero, tune count plus plus. That means to increment it. So we'll add one to it. So this routine is running one thousand times a second. That means that this this variable is going to contain a number that's uh, in microseconds. If it's five hundred, that means half a second has passed. I could run this loop less often. Uh, but I figure a thousand times a second is quick enough where I'm not going to miss a button press. Um, or I, I wanted that resolution. So, okay, we've got our counter. If it's anything other than zero, it starts counting up. All right, so this is the main loop, all right? The way a microcontroller works is it's you've got this one main loop that just basically runs over and over and over again as fast as it can. And the microcontroller is running at 20 megahertz, which is 20 million clock ticks per second. Uh, most instructions take, you know, two, three, four seconds or ticks. So this this loop is running thousands, of, well, tens of thousands, or if not hundreds of thousands of times a second. <laughs> the first thing we do is we read the state of all the inputs, right? Uh, so we're reading the key input, we're reading the bu tuning button up, tuning button down, and the band state button. Um, and so I've added these two tests right here. If tune count, so if that is if that has a value in it, that means we're already counting. And uh, button up and button down. And these are zero if they're pressed. They're another number if they are not. So what we're saying is if we are counting and neither button is pressed, set tune count to zero. So stop counting. Reset, reset that counter. 
this is if we if if we're already in a tuning mode, if we already had a button pressed, we'd be counting. So if if a button had previously been pressed, but now no buttons were pressed, we know that we just released the button, so we set the counter back to zero. If not tune count, which means if it's um, zero, we're not counting, and either button up or button down are pressed, set the counter to one. So this test is if we're not counting, which means no button has been pressed, and either button is pressed, then we can presume that the button was just now pressed, and we will set tune count to one, and the interrupt routine will then start incrementing it a thousand times a second. So we start counting. So with these two tests now, I have a counter that is only going to be counting while one of the tune buttons is pressed. And then I'll scroll down here to the tuning logic. Okay, programmers are going to hate me for, for this code because you know, I'm not a programmer. I figure it out as I go along, and I'm, there's always a better way of doing things, but this is the way I do it, and it works. So this is our tuning logic, okay? And when I get down here to where we're actually doing the tuning, uh, either tune button pressed, we set a flag to show that we're tuning. Um, if the v if not tuned VFO, uh, we're gonna if the VFO is turned off, we're gonna turn it on, which is what these statements do here. And remember with the flea, the way tuning works is the VFO gets turned on, but it doesn't go into transmit mode, so you hear the VFO in your receiver and you use your receiver as the side, don't, side tone for tuning. Okay, tuning up. First thing we test is if button up. Okay, so if we're hitting the tuning up button. And so I've changed this here. If tune count is less than 500. So if this button is pressed, but it has been held for less than 500 microseconds, less than half a second, then we move the frequency up in our minimum step. If, however, tune count is greater than uh, 499, so it's been more than a half a second, then we move our frequency up in our step times 10, the high rate. So I'm using the counter to determine, first off I determine if the button is being pressed, which we know it is, then I decide if um, the time is less than half a second, move it in the slow rate. If the time is more than half a second, move it in the high rate. And if, though this is the rollover, if frequency is greater than current band top, we set it to band bottom. So we roll over if we reach the end of the band. And then we set the VFO frequency. And then the same thing for button down. If we're pressing the down button, and our counter is less than half a second, move it up in the, slow in the slow speed. If our counter is greater than half a second, move it up in the high speed. And again, if we've reached the current band bottom, set our frequency back to the band top, which rolls us back around, and then we set the VFO. So that should work now. Our buttons should work reliably uh, and as expected. Let's go try it out. Okay, so now let's uh, try out the new software and see if we fix the bug. I'm on 40 meters. I'm going to tune. Yep, you can see it switched to high speed. Now I'm going to fine tune. Yay! We got it fixed! How about that? No more race condition. So there we go. The uh, tuning works perfectly now, just as I originally had envisioned it. So I have sent the updated version. It's 1.51. Uh, I've sent that to Harry so he can post it on his GitHub for ZachTech. And uh, I'll have it on my GitHub as well, below, linked, um, so you can go and download the new version and update your CW Flea with the new software. Uh, it's, a, it's an Arduino sketch. You can load it right into the Arduino IDE, and uh, you should be able to just dump it right into the fleet. So, there you go. I um, hope you found that interesting, 
and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.